Hello, and thank you for watching the 33rd episode of That Show with Billy Wilson. Tonight we have joining us the founder and host of Atlas Sliced, a show about traveling, Alexa Hart. Hello. And we have our musical guest, James Olmos, who will be playing a few songs for Hello. us for the last 16 minutes of the show, yeah. so stay tuned for that. And we have Janet Louise Stephenson here. She doesn't have a video at the moment, but... We did see Hello. her earlier, but we do hear her. Hello. And, um, <laughs> she specializes in business and personal development through uh, authentic interaction. And we have uh, web entrepreneur Jesse uh, Wadello. That, that is correct, yes. Okay, there you I go. Got there right. you go. That's perfect. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's one heck of a last yeah. name there. Special, yep. <laughs> And we have Marilyn Ritter. Is that how you say the last name, Ritter? Yeah. Okay, good. Just want to make certain. And uh, you work for Creation Ground Media. I do. Yes. And we have astronomer, writer, and podcaster Pamela Gay. Hello. It's good to be on. Yeah. And we also have Tibby here. If he's going to be cooperative at all, because everybody wants to see Tibby. Come on, Tibby. Come on, Tibby. I just gotta show him now because he may not be wanting to stay around. But that is Tibby, the big man of the hangouts. <laughs> and we are watching the event page for comments and stuff, and the players embedded there, so you guys can watch and comment there. And Tibby loves screenshots of himself, so he can take screenshots of <laughs> Tibby whenever I have him up. And he will reshare those to his page. <laughs> so, well, one of the things I want to start the show with is uh, hearing your thoughts, Jesse, about how Google Plus, it, you, you believe, will take over from Facebook. Yeah, sure. I wrote a post about, I guess, in early August. I know some people that work for Google and Google Plus, and I have talked to them repeatedly about how they're reaching out to college students and how education is the next step of Google Plus moving forward. And they gave me a lot of good ideas, and I think we all remember back when Facebook started, it was a just a college student type atmosphere, and it got viral because other colleges got interested. And I, I have said repeatedly, if you reach out to the college students, that's where things start to get viral because they're all in one small area, and they can share stuff quickly. Well, recently, I had the opportunity to work with a group of college students from the University of North Carolina, and fortunately for them, they were shared by the Google Plus official page, which has like 1.6 million followers, which was completely awesome. I, this was something that I, I don't know anybody else who's been shared by the Google Plus official page. And I think the ability for Google to reach out to students like they are doing and actually employing people to reach out to students is what's going to offer a a way that Facebook is not doing it. I don't think Facebook is actively reaching out to students to use their products for educational purposes. I think Facebook is a place to have fun. It's a place to post pictures of your cats like Tibby, but it's not a place to meet with other students. It's not a place to meet and converse about educational materials. And the Hangouts feature is amazing. As we can see here, you know, we're all in different, well, some of us are in different time zones, different area codes, we're all over the place and it allows students to do the exact same thing so if a student is studying on one part of campus and they can't get to the other part of campus they can use Hangouts and I'm seeing that more and more over the last two or three weeks and hopefully it will continue and that's where I see Google Plus really making a big step. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I'm just going to make a quick comment here. I was at a, an event with at the Cisco, which is, of course, here here in Silicon Valley, and one of the the speakers there was talking about, you know, they use web presence and all of you know WebEx and all that sort of thing. But the the aspect, I mean, in her opinion, video is going to be the thing going forward, and especially the video conferencing and the video, you know, people interacting on in video and she was remarking that in her teams and she had like thousands of people under her on you know various teams throughout throughout the world and that when people meet she'll try you know she knows it's the first time they've met face to face and she'll try to introduce them and they say oh no no it's okay I, I know them you know and she said well how do you know them and they said oh we've been video conferencing so it really is 
you, you feel like you know someone after you, you've been on you've been hanging out with them or doing video conferences. It's not it's it's remarkably close to actually having you know a real face to face interaction. And I, I, I think it's it, fabulous. It's really kind of amazing. We're we're using CosmoQuest to within CosmoQuest we're using Google Hangouts to uh, teach some of the informal short courses that we do. And one of our instructors, I had the epiphany this week that when I saw him this weekend, it was the first time I'd seen him face to face. But it was like I was seeing an old friend, and the fact that we'd never met in meet space was something I didn't even realize when I was seeing him. Because I, I don't know how many different times we, we've been having a heart to heart Google chat and then gone into Google Hangouts, and, and we're trying to figure out how to do all of these different things. And that same sitting down and drinking coffee and, and talking to one another, you can't do that in WebEx. You can't do that in Adobe Connect. You can do that in Google Hangout because of the way it automatically switches between who's embiggened on the screen because of the, the ability to just flip it on and not need to go through all sorts of other boot up this, boot up that. It, it's a flawless way of saying, go grab a beer, let's go talk. Yep. I, and I think the, you, you two hit it, the nail on the head, but what Google Plus is doing that makes it even better is it's a social product. Yeah. You can share socially, and of course, you know, the YouTube, we won't even get into all the YouTube access that it's going to give to, you know, save it live and the SEO purposes of that, but allowing it to be social to do these Hangouts is something that is putting Google ahead of Twitter and Facebook, in my opinion. And that, just like you both said, you feel like you know somebody after a Hangout. You're much more willing to share their stuff. You're much more willing to have conversation. You're much more willing to engage in deep thought. Well, there's even been experiences where somebody will travel to another city, and uh, you know, I've heard people say, "Well, I'm going to go, you know, stay with this person," and and yeah. and you know, their kids go, "Hey, mom, wait a second, you're not, but you know, what's the deal with that?" And you know, you have you don't really know them, and she's, you know, it's like it's okay, I do know them, you know, and you feel actually that comfortable with people when you, you know, because you see them, you know, you know, twenty four seven, you have access yeah. to them. <laughs> Yeah. And you know, what's in, you know what's interesting, Jesse, is I was in a hangout with, with Billy and I think Amanda Blaine, and we were in, uh, it was like the Google Hangout questions and answer type thing mm -hmm. that we have. And they were both talking about how everyone seems to become uh, more aware of the Google Hangouts and how to act in them and how to communicate in them. Where before it's just kind of you got some random people and they would say just weird things or do random bizarre acts and but I think it's becoming almost more of a cultural now you know a culture now where they they know the etiquette of Google Hangouts and just you know how what's appropriate for when you're on cam and stuff like that so I think that's really unique I think that's well, it's a subculture. I, I had to explain this to someone the other day. I, I was having the, will you just play online conversation. And it's like, no, it, what you see is a bunch of useless words as we're speaking in memes the way someone might quote a line from Shakespeare. We're admittedly quoting a line from a meme, but saying honey badger don't care, that, that actually conveys a chunk of content. And it sounds stupid, but we are our own subculture, our own way of communicating. And it's not better or worse. It's different, and it's ours, and it's powerful. Agreed, Pamela. And I agree with all of you. And once again, something else is Google employees are helping to go through that. I mean, you know, the, all the Google pages that they have created, the business pages, are helping employees dramatic, or um, not employees, helping people. And today I noticed, you know, they're, they updated the circles page. And I encourage everybody to go to the actual Google Plus circles page and check it out. It's really, really cool. They've They've added a way for you to find people of similar interests that are basically verified through Google, which I hope all of you have a verified Google account very soon. If you don't already, it makes life so much better because people are like, wow, you're a real person. But um, <laughs> once again, that's Google Plus reaching out, whereas with Twitter and Facebook, I think, unless you're a celebrity, I don't think there is there a way to get verified on Twitter if you're not a celebrity? No. 
And I'm I'm not a celebrity. I promise you that. <laughs> I mean, I have like six thousand followers. I'm not a celebrity, and I'm verified on Google because of my Google presence and because I know Google Plus employees and I've written an ebook and blah blah blah, whatever. But I think it's cool that Google is saying, hey, you know, these normal people that aren't necessarily celebrities or entertainers or sports stars, they are verified because they are proving to be good influential people and they're not necessarily huge names. We're the G plus list celebrities. Yes. <laughs> and and another thing I really like about uh, Google Plus is that you can share with the public and whoever, you know, on Facebook, if you have a group, a, a page, there's only, I think, what, like 15% of the people who actually see your post when you post something on your fan page, whereas on um, Google Plus, you can pretty much share with whoever you want. So I think that's a really cool feature that, that I like about Google Plus as well. Well, it's international, too. I mean, it is so much fun for me to, you know, to interact with people from all over the world. You know, I, I, you know, I have a home office. You know, it's just, you know, I, I'm there. You know, I can talk to, I talk to people, you know, all over the world every day on Google+. Plus. And it gives me a, a much greater perspective. I'm sure you, you know, you know, travel obviously. <laughs> you know, I don't have the opportunity. I can, you know, I can travel in a sense, you know, by talking to people on Google Plus. Well, and it's the only one that you can get to when you're in China. The Google Plus app does work in Beijing, whereas Facebook and Twitter are blocked unless you're doing text message updates. Really? Wow. Yeah. So random factoids. <laughs> it's, it's, I live that, via social media, and and while all of them do have strong international components, uh, Twitter Twitter's been how I've gotten to know a number of people for Astronomers Without Borders, um, and it's better for low bandwidth. Unfortunately, Google Plus still is a high bandwidth media. It requires smartphones, not dumb phones. Um, <laughs> But, but it, for the places that do have the high bandwidth, Google+, Plus, it's the most beautiful of the interfaces and the ability to captivate is so much more powerful within Google+. Plus. Well, I appreciate all the photographers that are on Google+. Yeah. Plus. I mean, what a treat it is. You know, just if I take a, you know, five-minute break from what I'm doing, I can you know, just open my mind. <laughs> you know, Marilyn, I'm going to say the opposite. It ruins my day because I look at it for hours. So all the photographers, let's tone it down a notch. Allow me to just look at it for 15 minutes and then stop posting. That That's what, that's what I, I love your photos. I love your photo spears. I love everything. But I waste so much time on Google+. Plus and I, unfortunately, you know, I got to stay focused. Maybe that's my fault. Maybe that's a me that, That's a personal It is a danger. It's, well, it, it is is a danger. Don't you doesn't everybody feel that way about it? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Rabbit hole. It's all about the filtering. Gotta filter those those yeah. uh, circles and those posts. Yeah. Or you know, I'll find myself just looking at a couple more and I, I mean I really have to you know, I I you know, I got a timer on it because I you know, I you know it can be one of those things because when you enjoy something you do lose your lose yourself in it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it's totally true. But it's good for teaching photography as well. My co-host on Astronomy Cast, he and I both bought matching cameras and decided we were going to teach ourselves how to use cameras well. And so we took turns posting one another's uh, pictures of the moon, posting our pictures of flowers up close and too personal. And so we turned it into a teaching challenge. And what was awesome is we got other people joining us in our attempts to get good photos of last year. It was Venus and Jupiter were close together in the sky with a crescent moon. And so we turned social media and a celestial event into a teachable moment, getting people around the world all sharing the same sky and trying to figure out how to share their pictures of that sky. Well, well, how about when Curiosity landed? I mean, oh, what yeah. an event that was. And so thousands and thousands and thousands of people were sharing that experience. And and we did a six-hour hangout for that where we had thousands of people and we were, we did a handoff from the SETI Institute, which did the hangout before us. And 
yeah, that was an amazing experience where we all got to share it together online. Yeah, yeah. and it's it's more meaningful when you're sharing it with other people. I think, yeah. you know, because everyone remembers what you know what they were doing when huge events happened. You know, yeah. for for me, you know, with the moon landing. You know, what was I doing? What was everybody doing? You know, all of those things. And now, you know, curiosity. I mean, I was on Google Plus. You know, mm -hmm. sharing that experience with with other people. So. <laughs> That's very cool. <laughs> yeah, no, so, it, it was a magical experience. Yeah. Pa Pamela, can we hear a bit more about your show that you uh, brought up? Um, so, so it's not just one show anymore. That's the crazy part. Is so it all started out back in the uh, uh, early days of Google Plus. Fraser Kane and I were able to get permission to get one of the early Hangouts on air, and we started recording our podcast, Astronomy Cast, to a live audience, which I think was about the most terrifying thing that I've done in my career. Because recording Astronomy Cast every week was sort of like going to going through oral exams, because <laughs> Fraser would pull whatever question he could think of out of his mind, and it was this wild ride of astronomy interrogation. And I, I love working with Fraser. It's awesome. But when it's just the two of us, um, when he asks me something I don't know, I can just Google. But now we're doing this in front of a live audience. And when he asks me something I don't know, I have to figure out how to vamp and Google with no one noticing. And, and occasionally there's been moments of, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. And that goes out live and gets archived in YouTube forever. So every time I've ever said uh, Newton instead of Neptune, uh, said instead of James Webb Space Telescope or, J or JWST, I sometimes say James WST. I don't even know what that is, but it's it's... So, so we now we started doing astronomy cast to a live audience, and that went really well. And then Fraser got this wild idea: let's start doing star parties where we hook webcams up to the eyepieces of telescopes. So we started doing Sunday night star parties, and from there we've just grown. And in January we're going to be putting together our, our own entire YouTube channel of Google Hangout-centered astronomy content. And we're now using within CosmicQuest.org. We're using Google Plus to teach courses, to provide educators, teacher professional development, uh, and everything else. And, and so for us, this has enabled us to communicate science to the world. And it used to be we would have had to have paid for a WebEx account, an Adobe Connect account. And I've used both of those as technologies. They work well. They're rock solid. But there's a cost. And there's a bandwidth requirement. And Google Plus gives us a freedom to communicate and teach that we wouldn't have had any other way. So that's what I do. Yep. That sounds great. I actually had uh, Fraser Crane, Fraser Crane, or uh, I keep on missing <laughs> his name. Fraser Crane. I don't know Kane. why. <laughs> Fraser Crane. Say that 10 times. On the other week. I, I keep messing up because I, there's like the the Frasier from the show. Cheers! Yeah, yeah. It, it there was actually a Wikipedia controversy when he got his Wikipedia page because people kept deleting it, saying, "No, this is a fictional character." It's like, no, it's a real person whose name is spelled one letter different in both names. <laughs> Yes. Uh, so I, I I remember when I introduced him on my show there. I, I said it like there's a you actually pronounce it slightly differently than the guy, guy yeah, from the okay. show. Yeah. And he's like, no, no, it, it's Fraser. Fra Fraser. 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 Yeah. Fraser. Fraser. Uh, uh, like I, I need to practice it like ten thousand times before I, I can get it. <laughs> because I still don't get it. And you're both Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> but quite far away. So and that's true. It's West in Coast. Vancouver, yeah. I'm in the middle of the Great Lakes. Well, hopefully not in the middle of the Great Lakes, because that's Michigan. <laughs> well, Roma life in, in the middle of the three big ones, like where they connect. Okay. So it is kind of like in the middle. <laughs> so and, I, 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 oh, oh, go ahead, Billy. <laughs> I, I, I was just going to ask Alexa about her show. That's Since just exactly. I'm di I'm dying to know uh, about Alexa. I, I sure read her thing. profile. Yeah. You know, I must admit, guys, I am new to the G plus world. So you know, all of you guys talking about this, uh, how long you've been using it and whatnot. I am so new to this. So what I'm doing is, I just started a web show. Um, 
It's called Atlas Sliced, and uh, it's a show serving up advice on how to live and work abroad. So there's it's there's kind of two things to it. It showcases different opportunities for people to live abroad long term, and and also it, it shows kind of how to do it. You know, the prepping phases. So it's it's kind of twofold like that, and I record. On Skype, but I just recently started recording on Google Plus, so um, I'm totally new to it, and I've been having a lot of fun just playing around with it and be getting some cool guests on. And um, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see where where the show leads me. And, and I've I've done a lot of traveling all over the place. I I recently returned from living abroad myself as a teacher in South Korea. I was teaching in South Korea for two years. It was very different, home of of Psy from the song Gangnam Style. I was living right there in Gangnam. <laughs> so um, it was quite, quite the adventure. How many languages do you speak? You know, unfortunately, I am embarrassed to say this, but uh, I don't speak Korean. I can only read it. So I speak a little bit of Spanish. Um, I, I learned how to read Korean. It's phonetic, and I could get around menus that way. And I could tell the taxi drivers how to get to my my house and uh, simple basic stuff like that for navigation. But you know, one of the, one of my favorite things that I loved about living in South Korea was actually the public transportation. Incredible! It was absolutely amazing. The buses, the metro system, is is probably my favorite thing about living there. And uh, I do miss it. But um, fan fantastic. As, as long as you can say more kimchi, please. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm actually a big fan of kimchi. Um, Me too. I, grew, I grew to like it a lot. It, it is a taste that you need to try more than once to like, though, I think. <laughs> yeah, totally. And I just saw a recipe online for kimchi smashed potatoes. I was listening to uh, an NPR segment, and it, actually, it sounds delicious. You know, like... The way some people are probably like, "Ew, that is nasty." But uh, kimchi is smashed potatoes. Check it out. Like, Google it. It'll be, it'll be on there. And um, I guarantee you, I, I bet it's good. I bet it's good. You can have it as a as a sort of a side dish for for Thanksgiving, just to have a little international <laughs> <laughs> turkey. Is is that internationality or levity for Thanksgiving? I'm not sure which. Because it's definitely not something a Korean would ever eat. It's it's. Kind of like lo mein on the national versus international versus bastard American food scale. <laughs> How about kimchi potato chips? Ooh, I'm, oh, come when, on. when I was in London a couple of years ago, I, I kid you not, I found barbecue squirrel flavored potato chips. Oh, that's... I, I'm not wow, quite really? sure why they think this is an American thing to... No, no, wrong. It's, it's up there with the shrimp-flavored potato chips. Um, yeah. Squirrel, oh, I'm sort of squirrel flavored? Yeah. <laughs> I've I never tasted squirrel like, This doesn't taste like squirrel. Barbecue squirrel. Tastes like chipmunk. Oh, I had a squirrel once. I raised a squirrel. And so, you know, not the, oh, not the squirrel. <laughs> So just out of curiosity, Alexa, that now that you're new to Google+, and you are on uh, Billy's show, you're going to get a ton of new followers and a ton of interaction. Have you um, looked into marketing your show at all? Have you had, What is your experience being very new? I, I guess the rest of us are kind of aged and veterans to this. Have you, have you felt the expansion of getting a ton of followers because you're doing Hangouts, or what are you doing to get your name out there? On on Google Plus, uh, marketing on Google Plus. I need to do more of that. So if you have any tips, that would be fantastic. Um, you know, I've been creating event pages beforehand, which is like you know what most people do, and inviting you know circles and friends and and whatnot. And I also think um, I'm wondering actually, this is a question that can go out to all of you guys. If there's a specific time um, where more people are on Google Plus, and um, would that be you know, it's something I'd want to focus on in terms of timing, the best time to air. I, I think it depends on where your audience is, and since you yeah. do an international show, that's, that's hard to know. 
Um, I, I know that some of our things, we, we have a very large Pacific Rim audience, so we do them in the evening, late evening, as late as we can bear in the United States so that it's breakfast time there. And it's really kind of awesome to be doing things where we're up late talking and, and we have people in our comments talking about they're eating their cereal in Indonesia. And, and so you just need to figure out where your personal audience is. Um, what, I, what I find is, is strangely, uh, for some things, business hours are ideal, and for other things, uh, right after dinner is ideal. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to play around with the right after dinner idea. Um, I've, I think I've only done like uh, three, so <laughs> yeah, I'm going to play around with, with different timing, but after dinner seems like a good one. Yeah, I would also encourage you to look at some of the other shows that are going on and not compete with some of the bigger names. I'm <laughs> just saying you don't want to compete with with Billy or some. I mean, there are some very popular shows on Google Plus that you know. There's a reason that Monday night during football season nobody else has any TV shows on. You know, you. Yeah. I would look around. I mean, you can probably ask any of us. We probably have some names that you'll want to converse with and ask them questions as well. It's Chris it's not, Perello. Yeah, yeah. It's not competition. Wednesdays, I found, yeah. have so many on airs. It's like everyone wants to do an on air on Wednesday. It's been ridiculous. Like this last Wednesday, I had nine on airs that I wanted to either watch or be a part of because I try to watch everybody else's on air. And there was at one hour where I had five ones at once. It was at 9 p.m. this week on Wednesday. There were five at once. So that's pretty that's a That's a really great tip. Thank you, uh, Jesse, for that. Looking at... at what the times that other people air. Oh, so. yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Good point. So I wouldn't do it on Wednesday. At yeah, least no, not Wednesday's night. out. Yeah. Maybe Wednesday afternoon. But I think it does depend on your audience. Like, nobody in Europe is watching you right now for the most part. And one person's going to comment right now saying, I'm in Europe and I'm watching you. But he, he, they're the only one probably because it's 3 or 4 a.m. In, uh, in Europe. So nobody's ever awake except one person I know of. Yeah, it's going on four in London. Yeah. So. And I would also suggest, Alexa, reach out to us and anybody else. Google Plus loves to help everybody else. Yeah. So, yep. I mean, I, I will share, if especially after a Hangout, and we talked about it, I, I feel like I know you. I've been on a Hangout with you. You know, if you want to... I, I like I said I'm not a superstar some of these other people on here are I do have a pretty big following as far as like avid followers so you know I know a lot in the education field so if you're ever doing a show on edu obviously you, most of your shows are based on education um, you know reach out to people I would suggest using the search function of Google Plus that is very very powerful you'll be surprised yeah. actually I searched beekeeping today and for some reason Marilyn pops up very first thing have no idea why I was like well this is ironic because I'm gonna talk to her tonight but I have a friend who was in the beekeeping she just got on Google Plus and she wants to start a conversation I was like well here's another person I know on beekeeping so use that search function of Google Plus about interests and uh, one of you probably, uh, somebody has a post on how to find circles of your interest. Do you have a post on that, Billy? Or I'm sure we can how get to her to a post. Fraser uh, Kane does a lot of posting yeah. on that. If you're not following Fraser Kane, um, I'd highly recommend circling him. You'll get a whole lot of astronomy. But beyond getting the whole lot of astronomy, there's also, he, he's one of the people that has figured it all out ahead of everyone else on Google+. I do have some circle shares, but when it comes to finding people like uh, the Public uh, Circles database has a lot of people, and then there was Group As, but they stopped working on it. But I think there's still a good database of people there. There's a lot of different resources for people. Oh, this uh, is this is really interesting. Uh, wh uh, what would you guys say is you know the average time that you spend on on Google Plus? You know, per week or day, Billy. Obviously, for you, it, it's a lot. About eighteen but, uh, <laughs> hours, I guess. <laughs> it, it's like Google Plus, then sleep, then wake up. It's Google Plus again. Yeah, for me, um, it's highly variable because I travel about fifty percent of the time for my job, and when I'm traveling, it it's the okay. How do I get the most bandwidth? And and I admit that I tend to default to Twitter and airports. Um, but uh, when I'm home, I spend a lot of time, and I probably spend three or four hours a week on Hangouts at least. 
Unfortunately, I spend too much time, a lot of it on mobile, but that little notification button on the top right is the devil. It is the devil. When I see that thing bouncing, I never leave. Um, I always have a I work online from home, so I have a browser open to Google Plus probably when I'm home 100% of the time. I'm not home obviously 100% of the time, but um I just I never leave. I've met so many awesome people and I have so many great relationships on there. I don't want to miss anything. I really don't. I feel as if I turn it off. I'm like, I'm going to miss something awesome and I always do. Every time I go to a sporting event or something, I'm like, I missed a huge event on Google Plus. Great. That's terrible. <laughs> but I mean, I I'm a, I'm on there 100% of the time. Just tabs are the worst thing that ever happened on the <laughs> internet. When, when they gave us tabs, we all went downhill quickly, but I, I'm not saying you need to be on there 100% of the time. Um, the Google Plus app, if you have a smartphone, is super, super helpful. And much more beautiful. Yeah. The experience, yeah. especially on an iPad or an Android tablet, is is so superior to what you get in a browser that you won't want to look at Google Plus in your browser. Cool. I have it, and uh, I have not experimented around with it too much, so I will do that right away, right after this talk. <laughs> and you know what's amazing is Google's not telling anybody to do any of these things. You know, Google didn't tell uh, Billy Wilson or Artists in the Plus or, you know, any of these people to start these types of shows. And it's, it's the community, uh, you know, building itself around ideas and necessities and, and creativity. So there's nothing holding us back from from creating these brilliant shows or these you know intimate moments or uh, capturing ideas with each other it's just it's people being people and moving forward with life and then incorporating everybody who wants to join in yeah so you know kudo, kudo, uh, kudos to Google Plus <laughs> that's one of those little tongue twisters um, no it's just a brilliant thing I'm so excited I'm not I'm very new to, to Google Plus I'm Probably uh, since September is the first time that uh, I came on, on on Billy Wilson's show, the first show that I was on, and so I'm only you know a, a few months into this thing, but uh, it's just a brilliant thing. I'm so thankful to be here, and thanks to all of you for for uh, being friends and sharing your lives and and you know the deeper aspects of what you do and who you are and 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 what brought you here I think this is brilliant people are, are going to continue to look at this and breathe this in and and dialogue because of it and that's just a beautiful beautiful thing so cheers to all you guys well Thank I have you. a question for you James uh -oh. um, whoa, whoa, yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. no 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 it, 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 it's, it's an experience question I'm not gonna I'm not going to be a Fraser Kane and be like, what's the square root of 27? So, <laughs> I, uh, not a perfect square, <laughs> not doing it in my head. So, um, I did notice you are new, James, and I know it's a huge community for people doing concerts through Hangouts. And what is your experience so far being new, and how have you reached out? I know there's at least five musicians I know that have gotten extremely popular. So, Daria, what's Daria's last name? Musk? Musk. Musk. Um, Brian Van Sickle, a couple other people I know got extremely popular. What have you done? Have you done free concerts? Have you seen a lot of interaction? And just you know, expand on that if you would. Absolutely. Um, I'm a little bit unique in that I've been streaming over the internet for probably six years now. Whether it's been in Skype, whether it's been on you know live stream or just in TV or you know all these different things so my internet presence is a lot bigger than my real world or you know non virtual um, experience and so I stream I've streamed for about four or five years in this uh, 3d virtual world called second life yes yeah right Pamela yeah, yeah. And um, so uh, I just I just did that tonight, as a matter of fact, from five o'clock to six o'clock. And uh, my my buddy George, I said, George, I'm going to be streaming, you know, for an hour concert. Can you go ahead and start a hangout, and I'll just do my thing, and, and people will come in. And so that's exactly what happened. Um, I stream for an hour. I I entertain probably you know 45, 50 people listening in on my on my internet radio station via my web page. And so, you know, these types of things are helping, um, you know, getting me circled and stuff. And then anytime I'm on a, I'm on a Billy Wilson show or Artist in the Plus, 
um, show or interview, then I'm probably probably gonna get a hundred to two hundred more circles or, or fans. Yeah. Um, you know, how many of them are true fans, and how many of them really just want to be circled? You know, don't have any profile or anything like that. It's like it's like, uh, who are you? Just oh. yeah. You know, I don't know. It's you, a little creepy I sometimes. Did I put you in my fan circle, or do I put you in? Nothing. <laughs> you have a baby so, picture profile thing. So yeah, out. look at Tibby, everyone. Yeah, it is time for Tibby, and he loves his screenshots. <laughs> <laughs> so, so James, with, with Second Life, we we were trying with the Mica Island, the the Meta Institute for Co Computational Astrophysics. We were doing a whole series of, of astronomy talks, and I attempted to take. Our very successful talk from Second Life and string it, stream it into a Google Hangout, and and what I realized was I had created the most boring possible way to watch oh, no. a, a talk, and and I'm not quite sure why it failed so terribly. Yeah. Are are you streaming your Second Life into a Hangout, or are you streaming both into the Hangout and into Second Life, or how did you not fail the way we so profoundly failed? Okay, so this is it, Pamela. This is your key right here. Are you listening? Yes. Do I have your complete and utter attention? <laughs> yes, yeah, she's good. Um, so uh, as musicians, and there's, there's, there's thousands of musicians in, in Second Life who stream, and what we do is we purchase a stream. So I buy 120 gigabytes worth of data yeah. that allows me to stream CD quality um, streams because I'm, I'm doing music uh, into Second Life or into anybody who taps in through, uh, the, through, through the stream, anyone who has uh, internet access. Um, so uh, you, you can do that and if you do that then you can tap into all these other radio stations uh, that can hear you very clearly and crisp and you know they can understand you. Um, so that's you know that's one way that that you can do that. Uh, now, why I, I don't understand uh, actually what failed, what part so, failed in your. So I I think what it was, um, for the people who were in Second Life, they they could see each other. They had the back channel. They could zoom in on the even in Second Life we use PowerPoint, so they could zoom in on the screen. But when I screen captured it into uh, Google Hangouts, it was my avatar standing there doing the avatar <laughs> hands on shoulder right. yeah doing doing the avatar random dance as as my voice went in and they, they didn't have the ability to zoom in on the PowerPoints and and so I think it was kind of like it felt like you wandered into something and were were being a voyeur and they just wandered back away so mm. it's it's what I found is it it actually isn't horrible bandwidth behaving. So if I'm the only one in my house on the internet, I can get away with giving a presentation in both Second Life and Google Hangout at once. It breaks my brain to follow the comments, so I try not to do this because I like myself most of the time. Um, mm -hmm. But but trying to, to stream, the, the audio quality was fine because I had separate okay. audio going into both of them. But but the taking the screen capture, looking down on the amphitheater, it was like you were sitting in the back row of the amphitheater and no one had invited you is kind of how it felt. Right. Hmm. Yeah, well, I, I'd love to work with you on that. I mean, if you want me to go into Second Life with you and, and watch and watch the Hangout, and then I'll, I'll be able to get a better idea as to really what you're saying. I'd be more than, more than happy to help you. I, I'll talk to you offline. Yeah, please do. I'm excited. Another cool Google Plus connection made. <laughs> you see how it happens? Yeah, that's it. So, and so I'm very Mary. familiar with that sim that you were talking about, that astrology, I mean, astronomy sim. Astronomy, yeah. No, I'm, astronomy. Not, I'm not familiar with it at all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm I'd love kid. to sing there anytime if you want. No. So, so, Marilyn, I wanted to hear about your bees because oh, bees yeah, sound we really bees. cool. We've been keeping bees for a number of years. Um, you know, when we first started out, uh, my partner, uh, George, George Cohn, uh, you know, got me involved, involved in it. And the first year that we kept bees was up in Portland, Oregon. And uh, so we had this big idea, you know, that we're, we're going to learn how to keep 
bees. He'd been doing it for a long time using bee suits and that sort of thing. So the first couple years that we worked, we had three hives up there and we worked without any protection and stuff. And so you really kind of get into the zen of working working with oh, cat. <laughs> cat. <laughs> Um, yeah, the Zen of working with the bees because you do need to be very deliberate and you know no jerky movements so all that kind of thing. But it, so that was that was a really interesting experience. Although um, I did have a couple of uh, uh, unfortunate incidents, <laughs> and I now do wear uh, you know a, a, a bee uh, 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 at least a headgear on it because you know I had a sort of bad timing when I had to be at a, a convention and and uh, you know <laughs> and I got a bee sting in my one side of my face was like about twice as big as the other and it was uh, you know it was just a weird experience. <laughs> people are like looking at you meeting new people and they're like what in the world but it's a very interesting hobby and um, here in Mountain View we have one hive we don't have it uh, we're, we're renting here so our landlords didn't go for the bee thing uh, so we have some really good friends who just live down the way and um, they are the hosts for our bees and we get uh, we we're not real aggressive in, in trying to get more and more honey out of the bees. We're you know we're pretty pretty ga casual with it and just enjoying it. But we harvest a the one hive we harvest a couple times a year and get over a hundred pounds of honey each time. Yeah. And it's it is so good. You know it's just delightful. It's a, such an interesting uh, honey. We've actually done it on hangouts uh, when we've uh, gone over. Um, to work with the bees, taking you know, uh, in our smartphone over there, and taking you know, uh, showed people what we were up to. So, <laughs> wait, you can you can do a hangout on a smartphone? Yeah, Android, not OS X. The OS X yeah. apps don't allow hangouts on air. They only allow hangouts. Yeah, I love my Android Bionic. It's the best. Yeah, yeah. So we got some good shots with that, and it, you know, it's fun. Be, you know, it's just another you know thing where you're thinking. What you know, it's kind of like a photo walk, you know, where somebody's taking you through an interesting place, and they're showing you what they're what they're seeing, and you're you're on a hangout, and you're thinking, oh my, you know, I'm seeing the, you know, the Black Sea, you know, and and I'm here at my desk with a cup of tea. <laughs> So, so ju ju just for just for clarity, Alexa and Marilyn knows this, but just for clarity, the hangout on air has to be initiated by a computer. Yes. So okay. Start the hangout has to start on a computer, but then you can invite in an Android phone, and the screen is not as big; it's a little more narrow, but it still offers amazing opportunities. Like like she said, you can go anywhere. I've often thought of, and I I traveling is perfect for this. Taking a trip down a scenic highway just on a hangout would be so amazing and I think that people would really jump on that you obviously have the international crowd so run with that one wow yeah, yeah. it's incredible we, we have had people join our hangout back in the early days um, before it, it, hangouts on air worked as well as they do uh, we used to say anyone who wants the first 12 or the first nine people who join can join and um, we had a dude join us and he had his camera up on the front of his car and he's talking to us while zooming in. It was a foreigner, I'm guessing uh, some Mediterranean country and it was the most terrifying thing to watch. We're all like, hang up, hang up, get out of the hangout. So, yeah. <laughs> Oh boy! Yes. All just right sitting at your desk, you know, or where in, in your office. <laughs> you, you never know what's going to happen. And the time's come in the show to get to our musical guest, James Olmos. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let me. Um. You know, it's interesting because I I I had uh I had some songs picked out and stuff, but I didn't pick this one. I'm like. Okay, what are we talking about? And so I'm I'm gonna sing this song that it's on my it's on my six song EP and it's called I Fall Into You. And it's probably one of my most uh, you know, I, I try and write very descriptively, you know, poetically. Um, I try and incorporate, you know, sight, scent, sounds, you know, all the different uh, you know, aspects of, of of life and stuff. So I'm I'm gonna pick this song. This just kind of talks about the sun and the moon and flowers and you know all this kind of great stuff. Um, and let me just go ahead and and, and go into studio mode here. Uh, and if everyone can just please mute your microphones. 
And, uh, I will and unmute to cloud. Okay, here we go. Um, I'm going to put it into this. Okay. Just so I can hear myself a little bit better. It's called I Fall Into You. Like a quiet storm Breathing in the earth and sky I move over you Tonight Like the diamond sky You listening, Pamela? Rushed in place with love I paint myself Next to you I fall into you Like the morning I fall into you Like the summer rain upon the ground I fall into you And like the light and the rain I feel your love fall into me to incorporate a B in here somehow. Let's see if I can do that. Like a honeybee <laughs> Carry There we go. Like the jasmine's bloom Carried on the wind's old song I will carry you Tonight Like a midnight mist Floating ghostly over the field I lay my dreams over you
like a honeybee. Won't you pollinate all around me? Oh, like a honeybee. Don't be shy, don't be shy around me. No, no. Oh, I'm not gonna forget about Tibby. Tibby's gonna come set me free. There, I did it. I incorporated that. <laughs> uh, I can't hear you guys because I have you guys all muted. You want me to sing another one? Or? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, 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 how, how you incorporated, incorporated honeybees, honeybees on the... On the like, kudos. kudos. Yeah, really? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, do, uh, I'll do another song off of my, my, uh, my EP. It's called In a Moment. I will see you In a moment we will be Two in one and one is all we need To love In a moment I will touch your lips in a moment we will be Skin on skin in under linen Why snow you fall on me I hope this is an R-rated show <laughs> I will hold you like a melody Sing each word into your soul Breathing into your skin you speak and I cry Feel the rush of love in my fallen tears Rolling gently over your skin In this moment I would bleed for you I will die for you I will see you In a moment we will be Two in one and one is all we need All we need to love I love you, I love you In a moment I will Kiss your lips you know, I love you, Tippy. I do. I know you're male, but you're soft fur and <sighs> skin on skin and under linen. Why does snow you fall on me? I gotta spit the hair out of my mouth, but that's all right. I will hold you like a melody. Sing each word into your soul. Breathing in your skin, you speak to me, and I cry. Feel the rush of love and my fallen tears rolling gently over your skin. In this moment, I would bleed for you. I would die. Guitar solo, right here. Little backup drums and all that kind of stuff. People eating sushi over there in the corner. I would lay it all down to see. Can you speak?
speak to me and I cry oh I Wow. I hear you. Yeah, I hear you. We have time for more. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll do a, I'll do an upbeat song. How's that? It's great. Well, thanks you guys for listening. I appreciate it. If you want to, you know, I do have a webpage. It's jamesolmos.com. You can see it on my my uh, my lower thirds there. I got a six song EP. You can download it for free. Those two songs are on there. Um, and this next song is on there also. It's called Oxygen. So. Is James playing? Sorry, let me try this. Okay. One. Yeah, we hear you now. But you, you were mute for a moment. Oh, got it, got it, got it, got it. Let me change the next one. Okay, there we go. That should be good. You hear me, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm waiting on your smile to fill my heart. I'm waiting on your love. To life to God, and nothing on this earth can fill me up like you do. Come on, Jesse, oh pale blue heart, find the air. I feel you on my skin, you're always there. I am me, and me will always remember you. you in my heart, I feel you on my skin, there's oxygen, I find you in my heart, I feel you on my skin, there's oxygen of love. I'm waiting on your smile to fill my heart. I'm waiting on your love to light the dark. And nothing on this earth can fill me up like you do. That's kind of hard to read those small names down there. Oh, pale blue heart, find me yeah. I feel you on my skin, you're always there. I am me, and me will always remember you. talking about my purple monkey. What's going on? I will breathe you again. I find you in my heart. I feel you on my skin. Find you in my heart. I feel you on my skin. Find you in my heart. We're almost done. I feel you on my skin. This oxygen of love. And I wouldn't be a rock star if I didn't go, yeah! Because that's what rock stars do. <laughs>
<laughs> Love the Love purple, purple monkey. monkey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can come out of studio mode now. Right on. Done. Done deal. Okay. So I got Tibet for one more scene one. here before we end the show. And I would like to thank everyone for watching, all the guests for joining me. And next week's going to be a great show as well. I have a photographer, Mike, Mike Spinnick, who's a professional nature photographer. And I have the, um, the social media editor for Surfing Magazine, Aaron Carrera. And I have musical guest, Rick A. So that should be pretty interesting. So we're going to have some surfing and some photography next week. And Tibby says bye. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Tibby.